Hello, and welcome to the EPRS Chronicles. My name is Dan Sobovitz, and in the next two episodes, we'll be talking about the future of European electric vehicles, or EVs, as we like to call them. Europe's EV industry is facing fierce competition, in particular from China. The question now is, will the European EV industry survive, and will our overall car industry thrive or perish in the face of global competition and other challenges? To help me answer this question, I'm joined by Kiel van Wieringen, Policy Analyst at the European Parliamentary Research Service. Hi, Kiel. Hello, Dan. So you recently wrote a policy paper exactly about this question, about the future of Europe's EV industry. What can you tell us about your main findings? So my paper explores whether the European electric uh, vehicle industry will thrive or perish uh, in the face of competition with China. Uh, it does so by, de by developing four scenarios for the future in 2030, based on the input of 10 policy experts. So before you tell us about the four scenarios, you mentioned China, and from your paper I understand that China is now leading the EV industry. How did China reach that position of leadership? What are they doing in China that we're not doing here in Europe? China is indeed the leader in the global EV industry. It produces over half of all electric vehicles in the world. Um, it, it achieved this position through various domestic advantages, like its uh, cheap labor force, its large internal markets, its cheap technologies, um, and its uh, access to natural resources. However, the, the Chinese government has put uh, also in place a, a number of policy incentives using massive, uh, massive subsidies to help grow its uh, domestic EV industry. And these policies have conferred uh, artificial uh, unfair advantages uh, uh, when it comes to competition with our own producers. So in other words, China had some advantages to begin with, but you're telling me that they're also not necessarily playing fair. And I understand that the European Commission has its own mechanism for investigating when partner trade countries are not playing fair. It did start one in 2023. So what can you tell us about this mechanism that the European Commission is using and what did it find in the case of China? So an anti-subsidy investigation uh, by the EU investigates whether uh, non-EU countries offer subsidies to, to their own industries uh, that are exporting uh, products to the EU. Uh, these subsidies can be seen as problematic uh, through the uh, investigation if, if this practice harms or poses a threat to EU industries. Uh, that are producing similar products, but that are, that are not uh, receiving the same subsidies. Um, the result of the probe has been um, for the European Commission to find that the Chinese-made EVs uh, benefit from unfair subsidies uh, and created an unfair advantage for the Chinese EV industry. So now that we know it, what can the EU do about it? So the EU response has been to, uh, to introduce various provi provisional tariffs ranging from 17% to 36% uh, on top of the 10% 10, 10 standard uh, import car duty. Uh, in October 2024, the member states supported the Commission to impose definitive tariffs uh, on Chinese EVs. However, Stakeholders and experts have warned that these tariffs are not enough to protect uh, the competitiveness of European uh, electric vehicle production. Uh, more investment and other measures uh, are therefore needed. Maybe to zoom out a bit, can you tell us about the importance of this particular industry for the European economy at large? Why is this so important and why is the EU and the member states taking it so seriously? There's double pressure uh, threatening uh, the European car industry, uh, especially the electric vehicle industry, namely uh, Western companies that are moving their uh, production capacity to China to produce cars there and import them back to Europe. And secondly, uh, Chinese companies that are looking uh, to the European markets uh, to sell their EVs uh, more and more and that are creating more and more overcapacity that, that, that is being dumped on the European market. Uh, Europe has become China's largest ex export market. So it's bigger than the US? Bigger than the US, yes. 
Um, there, are, there are also other issues that are facing the European electric vehicle industry, namely the, the slow electrification of the, of, the, of the EU car industry, the high battery prices that are causing uh, the European car uh, electric vehicles to be uh, too high, too expensive. And there's a drop in EV sales in recent years. So car, U European electric vehicle uh, uh, sales are actually shrinking which is concerning. Um, so the European Commission has said that the, f the fast growth of uh, Chinese exports uh, to the European market uh, and its high, its growing overcapacity uh, in the production of electric vehicles uh, is a threat to the European automotive industry. So to summarize many challenges to Europe's EV industry as we see it right now, but what can we expect for the future? For the next five years, your paper looks from 2025 until 2030. What is the trend from here onwards? So I developed three possible scenarios ranging from good to bad, plus one the disaster scenario. So good, medium, bad, terrible. <laughs> That's right. The good scenario is based on the hopes of the experts and it's called cutting-edge Europe. And in this uh, scenario, Europe develops cutting-edge leading technologies and becomes a leading uh, producer of electric vehicles uh, in the global markets. There's a middle scenario based on the expectations of uh, the experts. It's called slow electrification. And in this scenario, the Chinese car makers have captured a large share of the European market uh, through exports and local production, and Europe, Europe lags behind in production. So that means that for the next five years, we continue on the same trend as we see right now. That's right, yeah. Okay, so you started with high hopes, then worse, and now so there's also bad. The, there's also a bad scenario, and it's based on uh, the fears of the experts. And in this, this scenario is called over-dependence, and here Europe is reliant on China completely uh, for its technologies and European brands, EV brands, uh, vanish almost completely. What could possibly be worse than your bad scenario? There's a disaster scenario, <laughs> which is called sanction spiral. In this case, if, if there's a conflict over Taiwan and the Europe imposes, uh, um, imposes sanctions on China, China could impose sanctions back, could impose counter sanctions. And these could uh, pot potentially massively disrupt uh, the electric vehicle supply chains. That does sound like a disaster. So thank you, Kiel, for presenting your findings. As we can see, a lot is at stake for Europe's EV industry and the next five years will be pivotal for the future of this industry. Other than duties, what can the EU do to ensure we reach 2030 in an optimal scenario, the good one that Kiel just talked about? We'll talk about that in our next episode, still with you, Kiel. Meanwhile, I invite you to find Kiel's analysis on the future of European electric vehicles on the website of the European Parliament. Till then, thanks for watching and see you soon.